All right, good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Today we're talking about POTS and neuropathy. So we did a video on POTS a couple of days ago, or I did a video, and um, talked a lot about POTS and anxiety and the underlying causes of POTS and how there's vascular dysregulation and fluid accumulation of the legs cardiac deconditioning, autoimmune components really disrupting the communication between your brain and your lower extremities. Um, I'm also going to touch on concussions and POTS, but today we're talking about neuropathy. What is neuropathy? Basically, neuropathy is where your nerves tend to die and degenerate, and you have different types of nerves within your peripheral nervous system. So you have some nerves that are going to sense like which direction your fingers are moving up and down. You're going to have other nerves that are going to sense uh, pain and temperature. And while you're going to have other nerves that sense like if, you know, your joints are moving. So there's so many, or uh, vibration rather. So there are so many different components to the peripheral nervous system. And within that, you have these pain and temperature nerves. Also, you have what are referred to as autonomic nerves. So autonomic nerves are part of what's referred to as the autonomic nervous system. It sounds kind of like automatic, which it is. It's a nervous system that we don't have to think about to activate. It's kind of always running in the background based on what physiological state you're in, whether it be fight, flight, or rest and digest. But both of those sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems are working uh, at the same time, in some people, the balance has shifted one direction or another, which is what you see with dysautonomia. And POTS is within the umbrella of dysautonomia. So with that, we have the question of, well, if there is damage to the autonomic nerves, then will you have something like POTS? And that's been theorized for a long time. I was a little surprised this morning that there wasn't more information uh, published recently on this. So this was definitely talked about back before 2010. It was talked about to a certain degree up until 2015. Here it's it's still talked about, but I will say that most of the research in the POTS world is going towards the autoimmune component. So that's where we're at right now. It may circle back to neuropathy, but right now it's more focused on autoimmune. And those of you who are in the POTS support groups are probably aware of this medications affecting you know acetylcholine levels and things like that are becoming more commonly employed people are having good results with those um, and I'll talk about those in later broadcasts but just to kind of give small fiber neuropathy or autonomic neuropathy it's due because I have seen this clinically in POTS patients rather frequently um, we'll just cite a few references here this is cardiology in the young they're looking at pediatric POTS patients, they basically said there are multiple mechanisms, uh, including peripheral denervation, which refers to small fiber neuropathy. And then um, here, this is probably one of the more seminal articles. I think this is out of muscle and nerve uh, around 2014, 2015. And they said a subset of neuropathic POTS patients may harbor mild small fiber neuropathy with abnormalities of unmyelinated nerve fibers in the skin associated with reduced myocardial postganglionic sympathetic innervation. <clears throat> so here they took a group of POTS patients and they didn't find frank neuropathy in all of them, but most of them had reduced small fiber density, like lower limits of normal as to what they should be. And so that's important too, because if you're a POTS patient and let's say you have a skin biopsy test, which is the most common way to diagnose small fiber neuropathy, because uh, it's the easiest. So let's say you have a skin biopsy and it comes back normal. You may want to ask your doctor, okay, where on the spectrum was it? Was I down towards, um, you know, here they're saying normal is 7.2 to 2.9, or excuse me, lower limits of normal is 7 uh, per millimeter in terms of density. So you can ask them, okay, with this PEGP 9.5, that's basically the intraepidermal nerve fiber density test. How dense were my nerves? So that's the point. So something of interest, and then this one is from a more recent article published in 2020, and they basically said that um, POTS is multifactorial. It's 
it's overlapping issues of not mutually exclusive conditions, including uh, what I talked about in the autoimmune features. It can have the mast cell component, and there can be neuropathic features, um, basically where they're referring here to small fiber neuropathy. So again, I've seen it in clinical practice. Uh, it is there, but just know the literature is not as strongly supporting peripheral neuropathy as the main thing right now. So I always like to shoot straight with you and not just give you what I think it is, but this is what we know as of this point. So in coming broadcasts, I'll probably be doing autoimmune on Wednesday, which is going to be a big topic. And I don't know if I'm going to segment it out uh, because we're finding that with POTS, there are autoimmune components to different chemicals. There's autoimmune components to acetylcholine receptors, different acetylcholine receptors, and also to adrenaline receptors. So I'll try to go over all of that. So let me just see if we have any comments from Facebook. And good morning to everyone who joined. And I hope you all have a wonderful Saturday and be safe. And uh, let me know if you have any questions on this. And I will see you guys on Wednesday. Okay, bye.